Good morning. My greetings to all. General Manoj Pandey, Chief of Army Staff, Admiral R. Hari Kumar, Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Amar Preet, Lieutenant General P.S. Rajeshwar Retired, Director General, Center for Land Warfare Studies, Vice Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Suchindra Kumar, Ambassadors, High Commissioners, Excellencies, General V. N. Sarma, Former Chief of Army Staff, Admiral S. Lamba, Former Chief of Naval Staff, Distinguished Delegates, Guests from Bharat and Abroad, Officers from Defense Services, Think Tanks, and the wider strategic community, members of the media, friends, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> the Chanakya Defense Dialogue, this inaugural flagship event conceived by the Indian Army could not have come at a more critical moment in international affairs. I strongly commend this pioneering initiative of the Indian Army. This will afford a productive platform where defense strategy and collaborative partnership will converge to forge a secure, stable, and prosperous future in the vibrant landscape of South Asia and the Indo-Pacific. This innovative initiative will serve as a vital platform for the exchange of insights and discussions on critical security matters, further enhancing the nation's strategic awareness and expectedly catalyzing resolutions of complex issues. The two-day defense dialogue with six thought-provoking sessions would certainly traverse varied aspects of regional and global security, unfolding a roadmap to address situations. There would be focus on evolution of a strategy for security measures in the region to fortify India's position as a ready, resurgent, and relevant stakeholder among the nations of this region. When the world is somewhat on an edge, perhaps on a powder cage, with many a cliff-hanging situations, the conception of an ideation forum to dissect contemporary challenges to global security and peace is indeed thoughtful and timely. My compliments to the Indian Army, the Chief of Army Staff, and the Army leadership for orchestrating this event. Friends, this platform is eminently suited to meticulously analyze the complexities of security challenges in South Asia and the Indo-Pacific and define a way forward stance for collective security within the region. Quintessentially, India historically has been and is a land of peace, a significant global player whose most profound ambition is to structure a secure and peaceful environment in order that our people thrive, our nation prospers, and thereby the humanity gains. Vasudev Kutumkam, a sense from our Upanishads, the concept of one earth, one family, one future embodies both our way of life as also our global outlook. Sulay, Salamati or Aman, reconciliation, security and peace have for ages been central to all our endeavors. The spirit also undergirded our year-long impactful stewardship of G20, 
making it a historic success, converging into the consensually evolved Delhi Declaration. Friends, Raisina Dialogue, a multilateral annual conference committed to addressing the most challenging issues facing the global community, has over the years become a nerve center of focus on geopolitics, geostrategy, geotechnology, and geoeconomics dotted with conversations in foreign policy. The Raisina Dialogue 2023 theme, I quote, provocation, uncertainty, turbulence, lighthouse in the tempest, unquote, was indeed of considerable contemporaneous relevance. Thought leaders of the world engaged in several conversations of various formats. Another potentially significant event occurred in September 2023 the Indo-Pacific Army Chiefs Conference hosted first time by the Indian Army. It was here, General Manoj Pandey reflected, I quote, the Indo-Pacific region is not merely a collection of nations, but a web of interdependencies, unquote. There was global convergence of 17 chiefs of armies and 12 heads of delegations from countries as geographically diverse as Brazil, Tonga, UK, Saudi Arabia, Thailand, Indonesia, and the USA. In this perspective, the Chanakya Defense Dialogue will for sure complete the circle by emerging as an insightful global platform that not only identifies emerging trend lines in national security, but also demonstrates the astuteness to find solutions that can write them. It is a matter of satisfaction that New Delhi is coming into its own as this global epicenter for deep, thoughtful, well-rounded, comprehensive ideation that soaks in diverse perspectives from distant corners of the world in a sense, it signifies India's role in global affairs. Friends, the platforms that I alluded to have enabled the vocalization of viewpoints from the G7 to Global South while providing networks and pathways to wade through some of the most vexed problems of our times from climate change to green energy, digital divides, accelerating power transitions, economic cohesion, debt instruments, <coughs> sorry, critical and emerging technologies, connectivity, and infrastructure. In the fullness of time, these forums have potential to emerge as laboratories, hubs for the exploration of a range of new ideas, projects, and global best practices in foreign, strategic, policy, and national security. Ladies and gentlemen, India is singularly gifted with civilizational ethos of thousands of years. While the world rightly acknowledges India as land of great spiritual thinkers, it has also been the Karambhumi, the place of work of some of the finest strategic minds and hard-nosed realists. Acharya Chanakke, after whom this dialogue has been christened, happened to be one of such imaginative strategic thinker and a skilled exponent of statecraft, always prescient in his observations and advice. His reflections I caught, Sastra nahi uthaoge, to apna rashtra khodoge. Or Shastra nahi padhoge, to apni sanskriti khodoge, unquote. In English, if you don't take up arms, you will lose your nation. And if you don't read your, the scriptures, you will lose your culture. These reflections bear huge contemporaneous relevance. In a somewhat similar vein, 
another brilliant Indian mind who impacted the globe, a global icon. Swami Vivekananda observed, I quote, the world was a gymnasium when nations come to make themselves strong, unquote. He had capsuled everything which was relevant. What he meant was that strength does matter. You need to be possessed with strength to be relevant and to secure a proper global order. The strength of a nation is most impactful defense and deterrent. Leveraging of nation's soft power and economic prowess have become facets of strengthening security environment. Today's India, while cherishing and practicing the principle of Vasudev Kutumkam, also subscribes to securing such noble aspirations in strength. Our Prime Minister Narendra Modi, while reflecting, I quote him, this is an era not of war, but of dialogue and diplomacy, unquote, defined the wholesome global order. These facets are a sense of our civilization and nectar of India's position. He echoed sentiments must be on Bharat, home to one-sixth of humanity. Friends, emergence of Bharat as a leading global economy, coupled with its phenomenal growth, is a stabilizing factor for global peace and harmony. Peace is not an option. It is the only way. Its disruption leads to human misery and global challenges. There is need to seek peace at all costs through ideation, advocacy, outreach, persuasion, and dialogue, as also through strength, the later one being of extreme import. In such a scenario, the wisdom of such a worldview is reinforced by the worrying turn of global events in recent, in recent times, more specifically, as was already indicated, the expanding arc of conflict and the failure of deterrence, first in Ukraine and now in West Asia. It is worrisome that globalization and economic interdependencies are failing to preclude conflicts. The skill and finesse with which nations convert economic surpluses into currencies of hard power are becoming equally salient. There is a concrete need, therefore, to revisit the metaphysics of international system and debate as to how we could possibly strengthen deterrence and revitalize diplomacy in imaginative ways to contain and resolve conflagrations. The traditional mechanisms have nearly collapsed. They have not been able to neutralize the ill effects of these conflagrations. And therefore, such kind of dialogues would go a long way. This forum initiation at this juncture, with there being cliffhanging situations at places, is significant as it will delve into various facets of national security much beyond surface scratching and dealing with the issues that is stare us as writing on the wall. Two dimensions of the domain in particular appear to be striking and need attention. The first is the enlarging ambit. We have seen it. It's enlarging day by day. And the second is the growing complexity and sophistication that is also geometric. The issues are really draconian in nature. National security today is an aggregation of myriad attributes and capacities. Unlike the past, the military is just one part of the pie. Indeed, a paradigm shift from the past. I would go to the extent of saying a massive paradigm shift where we have to bestow our total attention to find resolutions that can fit in the present environment. 
And what are these? Economic strength, diplomacy, an innovative military industrial ecosystem. Military, I emphasize, industrial ecosystem. A resilient supply chain architecture, critical materials, rare earths, scientific prowess, ideational acuity, a strong R&D base, private sector competencies in both capacity building and war fighting. These diverse pieces must all come together to create a robust power dynamic. Collaborative security and innovative partnerships seem to be the way forward and it appears perhaps the only way forward. Emerging deep technologies like artificial intelligence, robotics, quantum, India is focusing on that. Semiconductors, India is focusing on that. Biotech, drones and hypersonics are not only rewriting the very character of war, progress and mastery of these domains will determine the strategic health and of notes of the future. Unlike the past, calibration of your power is dependent much beyond what used to be earlier. To meet such like changes, challenges, we have to have capacities in space, cyber, and the electromagnetic spectrum. These are complementing the traditional domains of land, sea, and air like never before. A totally new area. There will have to be mindset change. There will have to be microanalysis. And there will thereafter have to be convergence of varied points of view to look for a resolution. To meet such like challenges along with the structural corrections, we need a series of cultural transitions, new talent pipelines, and civil military fusion seem to be the new mantras. There would inevitably be focus over some of these issues and flesh out their final nuances. I have no doubt I have hope, optimism, and confidence that this dialogue will do great justice to the person on whose name it has been christened. The deliberations will rise to the level of Chanakya's philosophy, his strategy, his craft. The Chanakya defense dialogue may well be a good place to begin, and I am sure a worthy place to begin, an appropriate forum that will catalyze human minds to think of strategies for larger global welfare. That Chanakya Defense Dialogue is planned to be a regular event stated by Indian Army in the years ahead is a wholesome development. I congratulate Chief of Army Staff and his team for having so visualized and at a very, very appropriate time. Friends, and it has been said over ages, remember, peace is well secured from a position of strength. That is something what even Vyakan has reflected. That is the essence of what Chanakya has all throughout stated. To be prepared for war is a passage to peace. Emergence of Bharat as an economic power and it's enhanced soft diplomacy. And I can assure you, friends, the soft diplomatic power of Bharat has been so enhanced in recent times that it has become a real factor in the stability of the globe, which you all must have noticed. And I'm sure in one of your sessions, you will have the occasion to bestow attention on that. But all these rise of Bharat, phenomenal growth, technological penetration, world-level achievements, economic development of a time which was beyond dream and contemplation a few decades ago. Certainly not when I was in parliament in 1989 and a minister. When I compared those two scenarios, I know my capacity to dream was not, not to that extent as to dream what I see 
as a ground realization. This will be helping the country at large. It will augur well for peace and stability in the region. Friends, I am grateful to the organizers for affording me an opportunity to share some of the thoughts with the people who are here. Each one of you is an epicenter, nerve center of a thought process that can contribute massively for larger welfare of the world to find solutions to the conflagrations that are afflicting human society and for which right now most of us find in perception there is dead end. We have to find some light at end of the tunnel right now for two issues on which there had been reflections. The tunnel seems to be endless. It is only such kind of platforms where there will be brainstorming, exchange of ideas. You will bring on the table various technologies, thought processes, and that will lead, hopefully, for a solution so that this planet we can gift to our future generations as trustees in some shape. I have every hope. I entertain full confidence that deliberations will not only be productive and fruitful, they will be result-oriented. They will be of a nature to enrich those who are in driver's seat, those who formulate policies and generate awareness, the urgent need to tackle the problem. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Jayant.